Hey, ready for another exciting video where I'll take the complex, make it simple so you could continue creating. Wanna know what is very satisfying when you click that little subscribe button. As a bonus with this video, I know everyone loves it when the person who's giving you the knowledge is off to a corner of the screen. I'll be in the corner of the screen so you know I'm there. Not always, I'll pop up here and there, but I will be narrowing so you know I'm there, but you'll get to see me go like in other reaction shots too. So you'll feel like I'm on this journey with you. Other than the fact, again, that I'm narrating all this and sharing my screen. So see you in a few minutes and please subscribe. The camera sequencer is gonna make the creation of multiple shots so simple in Maya. And I'm gonna show you how to render out with Arnold, not last century's play blasting. You could also export all these shots as one new camera into Unity, Unreal, Blender, wherever else you wanna take this whole scene. I already have this shot laid out and I'll show you how to make it in a moment. There's the first part, there's the second part. If you wanna preview your shots within the camera sequencer, just click on play. This viewport is currently camera two. So if you hit play in the viewport, you're only gonna see camera two, which is fine. If you wanna see camera one, just switch to camera one. And now this is what camera one sees. The sequencer allows you to combine all those cameras that you only can see one at a time in your viewport into one place, multiple tracks or the same track in order to see and edit them. Let me show you how I got here. I'm just gonna delete these two. Go close up the sequencer. And let me just claim some real state so you can see this a lot clearer. As you do this, if you want to switch to the Arnold viewport, it's just when you do your playbacks through the sequencer or anywhere, you just turn off the Arnold viewport and you switch back to viewport 2.0. This way you can see your shots happen in real time without waiting for Arnold to catch up. To create a new camera, in case you're curious and you haven't done it before, go under Create Cameras Camera. And to see what that camera sees, go under Panels, Perspective, and select that new camera that was just created, Camera 3. Whoa, this is what this camera sees. You can use your mouse to zoom on out, hold down the Alt or Option key in the right mouse button to zoom in and zoom out, or if you have a wheel on your mouse, you could just wheel in and out with it. Now, since you're staring through this camera, camera three, just press the S key to start and turn on your auto key frame toggle. This way, wherever you go, let's say it was a pan like this, and then pan up, you get a keyframe dropped in. So move to a place and move the camera. And now you have this zigzag motion. That's kind of fun. I wonder if I want to include that in the sequence, right? Let's get into the camera sequence sync. But right before you begin, make sure you turn on the resolution gate to see the live camera region and you can turn off the masking for it right here. And if you need help, such as alignment, click on this icon, your field chart, and you can see how things are centering. All right, let's start putting all these shots together. Now to get to the fun part, the sequencing, that's gonna really open up what you can do. Go under Windows, Animation Editors, Camera Sequencer. This is Sequencer, it's a 2D viewport, so Option key or Alt key, middle mouse button to drag left and right. Option key, left mouse button, zoom in and zoom out, or the wheelie mouse. You want to start at zero. Of course, you could drag this playback head to zero. Like this. Or you could just type in number zero. Let's get our shots in here. Create shot. I'm going to zoom in and then drag on over. If the shot is defaulting to the perspective camera, just click on the track right here, this container for the shot. And in the attribute editor, control A for shot one, so you can rename your shot right here, choose camera one. Now camera one goes 90 frames. So I'm entering 90. And this is where the sequence is in the timeline. Let me set that back to zero. Moving over here, go create the second shot, create shot, and I'm gonna just drag it. You, I'm gonna drag it and put it next to it. You can leave it on the bottom track if you want. That's good. If you wanna to cut to something, come on back. Like if there was a shot here. Right now I'm not doing that. So I'll just drag it right over there. In the attribute editor, choose camera number two. Start at frame one. This was another 90 frame shot. 
and let's watch this play out. Just click play here. Now, the fun of the sequencer. The fun of the sequencer is that you can edit where you want your endpoint. Maybe you feel this shot is starting a little too far. You want to jump a little further in, let's say at frame 25. That's no problem. With this shot selected under its start frame, just click on 25. And just like that, let me hit play. You edited your shots. And you could go on, keep on adding shots here to render this. And again, to render this not with Play Blast, but with Arnold, we're going to create a new camera that combines these two shots. I'm just going to select them both here and select Create Uber Camera. Before I do that, did you already do that? It's okay if you did. I just want to show what's going to happen in the Outliner. So Windows Outliner, let me dock this window. Right now, we just have camera one and two, one and two. I made that camera three, still want to put that somewhere. I'll figure out where. And let me select this again. Now create Uber camera. There's new camera that combines your shots together. I'm going to close this window because I don't need any more. I'm on the Uber camera. It'll take the keyframes from the other shot cameras and make a new camera that combines all that motion. Switching to the Uber camera, panels, perspective, Uber cam, clicking play in the timeline. Cool, that's what we achieved. To see all this, to render it out with Arnold, go on to render settings and fill out all this fun stuff. It's not too much stuff. Pull this one city, pick the file type PNG. This is the most important step. You're running around animation Make sure for the file name, choose name pound extension, not just a single frame, because you want everything to render out. One, two, let's see where it ends. It ends at frame 150. I'll give it 10 frames, a little extra, just in case. So frame 160, select Uber Cam, and last chance to select the resolution if you want to change it. You're done here. To render it, go under Rendering, Render, Render Sequence. Open up the window right there. Make sure UberCam is selected. If you want to render to some other folder, I'm going to place all this within my Project Images folder. I'm fine with that. Next, you'll click on Render Sequence. And a few moments later, a few minutes later, you'll get to see your animated files. Congratulations, you just rendered your sequence. Now it's time to assemble your sequence. And you can do that in After Effects, Premiere, or wherever you do your video editing. I'll show you a quick demo right now. Whether it's Premiere or After Effects, you want to create a new project, give your project a name, and in Premiere, you'll import your assets here. In After Effects, it would be up here. Next step is to right click in this project area, select Import. And then go to the folder where, where your files were rendered to. Select the Images folder. Select just the first image. And this is the same in After Effects or Premiere, Mac or Windows. Select the first one. And if under Windows, you'll have a little checkbox down here on Macs. Just click on the Options and click on Image Sequence. So select the first one. Find your, your Image Sequence toggle. Toggle it on. Click on Import. And we're almost there. Drag this Image Sequence right here. To your new items and see the magical results of the camera sequencer press the space bar to be continued when it's time to render this out go under file export media or send it directly to media encoder i like media encoder not because it's quicker it's quicker to render in premiere or after effects directly i just have everything set up such as my luts here Pick a place to save it and click the green button to begin your rendering. When it's all done, click the hyperlink and then double click to view it. You'll find that the camera sequencer is going to be very productive when you're creating your animations.